exploring the capital city of Zambia, we visit the old Lusaka Boys School, now a national monument. This is the first government school ever built in Lusaka, established in 1908 by the Dutch Reformed Church and the Africana community. To cater only for the white European children of the farmers and settlers who lived around the surrounding areas of Lusaka, and by the August of 1910, the foundation of the school had been laid, and in 1916, the expansion of this building had been completed. This old Lusaka Boys' School was actually founded as a co-educational school for both the white boys and girls of Northern Rhodesia until the completion of Lusaka Girls' School, which was opened in 1939. And after this, the school became an all-boys school and continued to operate in that form until 1959, when the new location for Lusaka Boys' School was opened. The school, which later became Lusaka High School, for the secondary education for both boys and girls, and this building became abandoned. And this school, this building, became a testament to how native Zambians were treated during the colonial times of Northern Rhodesia, the mindset in the educational system, the racial discrimination of the African child in schools and in the religion of other churches. Because in many parts of the country, the Zambian child was not allowed to integrate with the European child in learning. For instance, this school was established by the Dutch Reformed Church that had strong beliefs towards the support of segregation in churches and schools in Africa. We must educate and Christianize the African, but cannot have anything to do with him socially. Do you find any conflict between apartheid and Christianity? No, certainly not. As a matter of fact, our Dutch Reformed churches are doing much more for the Christianization of, this, of the non-white people in this country than any other Protestant church uh, in this country and anywhere in Africa. We as Christians believe in the uh, development of the non-white people and we certainly uh, try to develop them as far as possible by building their churches, giving, subsidizing them in their church work and we are also trying to uh, give them leadership where they want it. And our uh, experience is that these people prefer to be left in their own churches. As a matter of fact, there are nine different uh, non-white churches uh, belonging to the Dutch Reformed Church amongst the non-white people. This has little to do with all the children who attended these schools, but more with the structures and authorities that guide the mind of a child in how one views the world, the subconscious teachings of superiority added on to the growing inferiority complex of the African child. In seeing the different standards of education they received in those colonial times, a child's education is a fundamental stage of their lives, African or European, a stage of construction in how they think about the world, the knowledge of what world they live in, the possibility of what world they can build. And after winning their fight for independence, the territory of Northern Rhodesia became the sovereign country of Zambia on the 24th of October 1964, and segregation was abolished and all the schools became integrated. Children of all races will now be taught and educated under one roof, the same classrooms, the same uniforms, no barriers, no fences, all students singing one national anthem of one country, the country of Zambia. It was written that even the Dutch Reformed Church saw a shift in the Africanization of the church leadership in an article called from Dutch Mission Church to the Reformed Church of Zambia. And yes, Colonialism outlines the period in what we had to struggle through as a nation, a story of unity in what we had to overcome, the inequality in the treatment of the African family, either in education, religion, employment, society, philosophy and being. We accept and let go, we forgive and forget, but always remember the lessons in what history teaches us in the story of our humanity. Education is key and knowledge is power. And after years of being abandoned, 
the old Lusaka Boys School was refurbished, and are now the offices of the National Heritage Conservation Commission, situated along Didan Kimati Road near the intercity bus terminus. And thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want a full version of the history of education in Zambia, you can comment down below. See you next time as I travel the world.